Pilates is a practice. And not everyone is conditioned enough to just walk into the studio, plop on the reformer, and get to work. And quite honestly, a lot of the pros out there still need a little bit of time to just center themselves, get in their bodies, and really take in the space around them. And for that, I have a slew of exercises that are mat-based, really floor-based. You don't need a mat, you just need some floor, and I suggest you have some space around you. Um, if you wanted to put a title on this, we could call it Pre-Pilates if you wanted to. Um, I really just like to call it greasing the spine, greasing the joints, and just waking up the body. So if you want to put on a spring, you know, you're good to go. So we're gonna start on the mat seated, looking for that feeling of stacking the spine on top of the sits bones, spine going up tall. And we're gonna start with an easy breathing here seated, breathing in, feeling the chest lift, ribs widen, the back widen, and an exhale, trying to keep that feeling of being tall. And now we're gonna actually exaggerate what I don't really want to happen. I want a big inhale. And we're gonna exaggerate an exhale where we let go and we kind of collapse in space and feel how flexion shows up because of giving into gravity. And then on the inhale, let the expanding and the working of your extensor muscles of your back body, your anti-gravity muscles lift up. And on an exhale, give in to the pull of gravity down. And notice this does not require any contraction of the abs. Gravity can just push you down. And use your inhale once again to expand. And now we're gonna let the arms move with it to have the feeling of the arms being wings. And yes, go ahead and look up. Get a little arch in the back. Exhale, just give in to gravity. Don't try to make it a thing. And if you really give in, your arms fall. One more of those, inhale. And make it as big as you want. Meet yourself where you are today. If you want to go all the way up to the idea of the reaching to the top of the ceiling, fine, fine, fine. And let your ribs play. Come on down. You're not trying to center. You're not trying to get aligned. You're just trying to move. All right, and then we're going to stack up tall. But now we're going to take some actual muscular work to make flexion happen instead of letting gravity allow flexion to happen. So we're going to inhale up tall. And now I'm going to think zip pubic bone up under belly button as I exhale, curl the tail, little push into my feet, little pull with my hands, and I curve back into. And then I'm going to let my head lead and I'm going to pull forward. And as I come on top of those sits bones, I'm going to inhale and stack up. Now you can take your feet wider, right? If your hip flexors are really bothering you, you could sit up on a block if you need to, but go somewhere that makes you happy. Place your hands wherever, even if you want them on the floor. And as you exhale, zip, scoop the pubic bone up under the ribs, tail curls under, and now you're making flexion of the spine from actual contraction of your abdominals. Pull forward, stack up. And now you're gonna go back and you're gonna stay in that curve as deep and as comfortable as it can be, but let it be a stretch. Let it start to pull up the tips of the toes where you start to rock back on your sacrum and then reach through the legs. Let it pull you back forward and then stack up and going back again. Now I'm gonna pull my legs in towards each other more. And if you can access a feeling of a little hover and a little balance with your toes off the floor on that sacrum and then lift. And if you, can, if you have to, keep your toes on the floor. That's absolutely fine. I'll do that on this one. But then look for reaching one leg and a little stretch across your back, a little reach across your back. And just let your shoulders wiggle. Let your ribs twist. But keep a good scoop. Keep a good scoop so you're not falling out of gravity. And then we're going to let both legs reach out. Dive forward, hands onto the floor. Look for those hips. Look for those hips. Because to mobilize the lumbar spine, you must articulate inside the hip socket and you find that tuck under and I'm going to push into the floor and with this push now comes this scoop I'm literally pushing that abdominal contraction together and then exhale back forward now and then inhale stack up and use the press of the hands on the floor and if your arms aren't as long as they need to be to hit the floor grab some blocks okay so give yourself that feeling of push and then on an exhale curl the tail Scooping back into that lumbar again. Diving forward. And then stacking up, 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 up. We're gonna go ahead and roll that all the way down to the mat now. Curl and scoop, and I'm gonna give an easy push. 
And if you need to put your elbows down, put them down. Otherwise, control yourself down to the mat. I'm going to give a little adjust wiggle to come on down. All right? So we just played with some flexion and extension of the spine, right? And warming that up. We're not done warming that up. There's still rotation and lateral flexion. But let's use the floor for support and work into the hips, knees, and ankles a little bit, right? Flexing the feet, feeling how that rocks weight up through the spine. Lowering the feet back down through the arches, balls of the feet, toes. Giving a little press lift to the heels, toes peel. And just a rocking back and forth through the longitudinal line of your foot, All right? And yeah, I'm gonna even give it a little supination, pronation, little inversion and eversion, just to say, hey, feet, sees what's up. Even give them a little stomp on the floor so that the sole of the foot wakes up, right? And then let that settle where you still feel both sides of your pelvis. We're gonna take a knee fold, which is really a hip fold, okay? We like to call them knee folds because we see the knee moving, but we're looking at this articulation of flexion. On an exhale, I'm gonna pull in, bringing that leg into center, and then set it back down, inhale. And on an exhale, keep that scooping lift so that the pubic bone is parallel to the floor, right? Because I don't want you in an imprinted tuck, but I also don't want you hanging out downtown, okay? Keep it connected. Knee fold right, adding on. Can you bring the left leg in to meet it? Zipping both legs up towards center. Really knees to your forehead. Don't think drop them down into your chest. Pull them up with you. The first leg that came up comes down, and then the other. Try the left leg. Use the arms to stabilize. Let them wake up so that you don't fall off your center. Fall down out of space. Exhale, push yourself tall. Left leg down, right leg down, All right? Is it really truly articulation of the femur in the pelvis? Or are you giving this extra lumbar action to get the legs to move because this is not your hip sockets, right? These are not your hip sockets, right? So we're going to expand that to what we would call in the dance land a developé. Knee comes up and in, leg stretches up, develops, and comes down. Pull it in, reach it up. I'm going to add an action of the foot flex and bring it down. And again, are we moving the joints of the hip, knee, foot, ankle? Or is it this action all over the body? Try to can bring it down and reduce it to its simple action of what needs to move when. And then we're going to set that down. Other side in, up, flex, and reach. Breathe with it. Inhale. Exhale, contract, and oppose that leg going down. Do about four each leg, four to six. It's up to you, it's your day. Then we're gonna go for the enveloppe, which reverses. Press down, out, flex the foot, lift, point and bring it down. Now you could also play with the foot. I could lift with a pointed foot if I wanted to, flex and then come down. It's a very different feeling. Choose what makes you happy, right? <laughs> now my foot's like, I don't know what's going on. And then left leg, reach out, flex up. And I just have to be even because this is, Actually, my warm-up, too, I haven't moved today, so, you know, <laughs> this feels delicious. And then, now, the thing is, that took me through a parallel range. I haven't done anything, really, for my rotators. So, really, let's just look at an easy external rotation, what I like to call a double clam, and then back internal rotation. I'm going to take my feet a little bit wider, okay? because I'm not looking for soles of the feet together. I'm just looking for what guides rotation. And let the foot ankle follow the line and then inward rotation. And let's go forward. Let's really inwardly rotate. And then open. And then back in. Now decide, is this going to be a stabilized lumbar? Or are you going to let a little bit of anterior tilt then you would have to correct into a posterior tilt. There's nothing wrong with this, but make the choice. A moment ago when we were doing the devil pays and envelope pays, I said, hold it still. Well, what if you didn't? What if you wanted to rock around? That's fine, but know that it's a rocking of your flexion into extension, 
Know that you're doing that. Don't make the conscious choice. Now we're going to start to circumnavigate that femur a little bit, right? What if we take one leg up, take it open around towards its clam, back into the floor center, and then the other leg. And notice how the pelvis responds. Does one side have this great stability and then maybe the other side, like on me, like you just saw, it just went way, <laughs> I think it literally did that, right? And I'm gonna make the choice. Maybe I want that feeling, oh, actually that feels really good. To let that take a easy spiral of my lumbar. In addition to that movement, now if I keep the lumbar still, it really isolates it back into the hip socket. Really isolates it back into the hip socket. And I can reverse it uh, and up around. Let it rotate outward, pull up and around. Okay? I can make the choice. Let the lumbar happen or not. So now we're in here. Now I'm here in some easy knee sways, right? And again, if I control lumbar, we're only going so much. And these knee sways really become about the femurs moving in the pelvis. Now, if we let that movement actually take the pelvis through space, here comes the lumbar. And here comes warming up, easy rotation in the lumbar. And for those who already are coming to you with lumbar pathologies, if you have one yourself, this might be the extent of your rotation for a while. Rotation takes a while, while to rebuild when it's been, when the lumbar has <laughs> basically saying, help me, and it's screaming for help, right? Easy twist. Now, if we let that twist get a little bit bigger, it's going to move up through the thoracic, and I'm going to let the cervical go with it and then bring it back. I'm going to take my arms a little bit wider so I have room. And it's all right if your ribs play and your shoulders move. Oh, it feels so good. And then back center. So the spiral now comes up a little higher through the neck and the rest of the spine. Nice and easy. And back center. I'm going to open my stance of the legs and straight stretch them out. I'm going to bring my arms up. This is what I like to call the magic X, right? Your body makes an X. <laughs> but really what you th want to think of is you have six points of energy. Arms and legs, one, two, three, four, reach out from center. If they were to continue to keep going, they would pull on the spine and let that happen. Feel that idea of reaching. Now, where are five and six? Five and six are head and tail. Okay, ready? Head and tail. So we're going to think exhale and pull head and tail together. Pull all six points into center. Pull up, curve up, tail up, head up, everything up. And then I'm going to think reach all six points out away from center. Find the floor for support. Reach them, stretch them, like a big morning yawn. Breathe, circle your feet if it feels good, it should. Circle your hands and your wrists, don't forget about them, right? If you're gonna get on the reformer, you want your wrists actually warmed up for your long stretch series and all weight bearing, right? And the pulling on the straps and the handles and things. On an exhale, curve back in, curve back in, pull in tight, pull in tight, pull in tight, and reach back out. And we're, we're going to take that rotation through your spine a little bit deeper. Reach, the, reach one arm over, up towards the other hand, and then let that spiral your back. Twist, reach, let your focus move. And then exhale, bring it back through and back out into your X. Other hand comes across your chest and picture your spine, almost like a maple, spiraling and turning. And let your focus move. And then roll back through. And then you're going to take that same action, but you're going to start from a leg. Bend a knee. Pull it up. It gets lighter if it's a bent leg. Let it reach across center, spiraling from the lower body. And now I'm going to think, reach this diagonal from foot to leg so the spiral really opens. Oh, that feels so good. It's really hard to be professional when that feels so good. So, you know, roll with me here. <laughs> Left leg comes up and in, reaches down, out, over. Now don't hang in space. Find that diagonal, find that reach, find that reach, and just let it feel delicious, and then pull back. Go with whatever felt good, whether it was your arm, your leg, starting there. For me, my right arm felt delicious. And listen to your body and what tissue of your lats and your obliques 
may feel tight or just want to just keep going in the stretch, all right? You've got your lats running down and your obliques coming all across. And when you work that spiral and the diagonal, woo, it's super awesome. Now, what about lateral flexion, right? Because that's spine of the race, uh, range of the spine we haven't gotten to yet. So we're going to take right side of the body, which is my side closest to you. I'm gonna think elbow and knee come together and let that side bend me, all right? This is where mats get annoying and come back center. And I'm gonna curve into the left side bend and back center, all right? And let it reach over, let it reach over, let it reach over, and then back center. And then you're gonna reach over, now watch this, as you take your curve, it could pull over to the side some more, it actually pulls you onto your left side, tuck in on your left side. Right, go ahead and stretch out on your left side. This is where mats are annoying, so if you want to get off your mat, go for it. And then I'm going to tuck back into that center, head, tail around, all limbs in. And I'm going to take this nice, easy, dead bug action and come back center and wiggle that out. That felt awesome. I'm going to do that now facing you. Right side contracts, pulls in, and it pulls in so much it rolls me over. I've got to so I can stay in camera. And text now I'm going to stretch it out. All six points, reaching out from center. Exhale, pull back in. And then I'm just going to bend the front body up to center. And come onto my back, knees to my chest. And you're going to see me come off my mat for this, okay? So this is why I said at the beginning, make sure you have space, right? And we're going to let the legs come over. And then I'm going to find an opening of the right, spiral through the back, and bring the left leg over, bring over an arm, bring over the other arm. Find a sequential leg, pulls pelvis, spine, the other leg, pulls rib cage, arm, other arm. Try to start with the arms. Pull open, then bring the legs, pelvis, lower body, and then finish the other arm. Now I've been doing this for like decades, <laughs> all right? I kind of do it every day, it feels juicy, but if you've got tightness places, ooh, finding the sequential movement might be kind of difficult. So what if you could make it about keeping the same unilateral work pulling through space, arm and leg, right? Then where is it going to bring the left arm and leg and close the book this way, right? So if that, if that sequential movement of lower body, upper body was making your brain go, wah, right? Break it back down here. Lift the left side. Feel the weight shift down into the floor through the left side as the right side lifts and comes over, right? This takes so much work in your lateral body. Even though we're not really thinking twist or spiral or lateral flexion, you're really using that side body, right? And do one more. And you can feel how you have to work to keep the shape. And then you're going to bring yourself back center onto your mat. <laughs> right? Okay. Get situated there. All right. So we've gone through your sp some fi spinal flexion and extension. We've gone through some lateral rotation and lateral flexion. We've gotten the lower body warmed up. The upper body of the arms, uh, we've only done wrist so far, which is some circles. But that's a big deal, right? And this is something that is really actually great for um, coordination on many levels. Take your fingers to the ceiling. If you can get both legs to the ceiling to match, great. If you want to do one arm and one foot at a time, also great. Fun trick for your brain, opposite hand, opposite foot, right? Okay. But I'm going to do both just for time's sake because you can, again, get creative and do what you want to do. But find flexion, plantar flexion in your feet, <laughs> right? But find where the hands and wrists open, feel where your palms close, just like the soles of the feet. They really mirror each other, but we don't walk around on our hands, right? Okay, but we need to woo, remember that they are sensory just like our feet are and send information all the way back into our shoulders which really ultimately connect to our upper back right okay and then what if there's a circling of both 
Can they both go outward? Can they both go inward? And your shins and calves should wake up and start saying hello to you, just as the muscles in your forearms should. Now here's what you have to look, be specific about. Are you moving the wrists and hands and ankles and feet, or are you moving the hip sockets and rotating from the shoulders. <laughs> oh, but this still also feels kind of nice, right? Let the joints just kind of wiggle, right? And then bring them back center. Again, if you're on one hand, one leg, just know what you're doing. Change it around, okay? But a feeling is if the ceiling's coming down to you, bending the knees, being strong, push back up. Point, flex. Here comes the ceiling. Be ready for it, be ready for it. Push back up into it. Right? And what about opening? Now we're getting into those adductors, A, B ductors again, but also working muscles across the back and chest. Right? And work, ooh, working symmetrically really helps you find center as a warm up. As we start breaking this up, if we want to move unilaterally on the same side, different challenge. Ooh, right? These are great brain teaser wake up things here. Can I go opposite arm, opposite leg? Ooh. Opposite arm, opposite leg. We're getting that movement into the shoulders, right? All those shoulders. This could expand if you want to really embrace your ninja skills all the way into helicopter and back center, right? all the way Woo. and back center and what if we just did one leg other leg one arm other arm opposite arm leg oh opposite arm and leg and now my hips my arms and my shoulders everything my ankles feet forearms the body is alive but the reality is we have to also warm up the idea of being vertical. And now we've come back to seated. So I'm going to face you, right? Now, I'm going to go ahead and cross legs. But if you sit as such, know that it's going to be slightly tilted in your waist regarding your pelvis rib alignment. So it behooves you to switch your legs right? Which is in itself just a fun little exercise, right? It's really warming you up for crab, which is advanced, uh -huh. more basic, your seal, right? But again, that rocking action of going back and forth, that comes up a lot in Pilates. It's really not about so much rocking around. It's about being able to give into gravity and then fight back against gravity, okay? But in seated, here we are back up vertical in space, right? Being loaded by gravity. Cervical spine, easy rotation, separate from thoracic, back center. Cervical rotation, again, independent and separate from any thoracic and or movement in the shoulder, separate from, up tall. Rotation. You'd be amazed how difficult this is for a lot of people. Lateral flexion of the cervical, right? What you're really going to listen to in your body is tension or lack thereof, hopefully, in your upper trapezius, okay? Your levator scap, right? But your cervical spine must be able to go through the same ranges as the rest of your spine but then you also have to be true to the weight of the skull and its articulation in the uh, at low axis top cervical vertebra in the top right because they are very specific vertebra there right and as we live in the world as more forward animals and then comes the cell phone and then gravity right, right, right. we begin to have restriction in that freedom at c1 and c2 so i find it very helpful to start with an idea of 
Where is the weight of your head? Where is the integrity of your cervical spine really fighting gravity at the top, therefore making you lighter at the bottom? Because the displacement of the weight of the head atop the cervical shifts the weight all the way down to the spine. It is literally impossible to slouch without first breaking the cervical spine in terms of its alignment with the weight of your skull and its supported mobility up there in the atlo axis. So I find it very helpful and you'll, you'll see and you'll feel tension in the shoulders and the response that happens. So now we can go back into that upper body a little bit, reach your arms out, fingertips onto the floor. As I take the head over, now I'm going to let it take the thoracic flexion, lumbar flexion. Then I'm going to let it bring the shoulder. Nice, easy side stretch. Push back up. Head leads. Right arm. Um, mm, sorry, my right side's really tight. And I was going to say something really profound and awesome, but it just felt so good. And then we're going over again. Now I'm going to let my head lead, and I'm going to let it spiral me forward. And all this is is about coming Ooh, off of center and then back up through center, right? Center's nice and tall, haha. -ha. And then what if I start to tip away from center and twist away from center? Can I come back up through that pathway and back up, right? Waking up that idea of where's my spine moving through space and feeling tissue and back up. And all of this is to wake up my mind-body connection, but it's woo, waking up such wonderful goodness right in here for me. And then coming up. And yes, easy shoulder circles. Easy shoulder circles because yes, the shoulders have a whole lot of mobility. They do need to be able to rise. They do need to be able to lower, okay? But you don't want to live here. You also don't want to force yourself down here, okay? Easy, right? But can you keep the integrity of the cervical and the thoracic and really make it about the sliding and gliding of the scapula and shoulder blade on the back, the easy movement of the clavicle on top of the ribs, right? But then also, the moving of the humerus, the actual ball that constitutes the ball and socket of your shoulders. Whatever feels good. I always say to people, your shoulders are your shoulders and they woke up the way they wanted to today. So get your spine strong, right? Get tall and then just let them be where they want to be, right? Let them be where they want to be. Your arms can reach up and tall and yes your shoulders can go up let it happen and then feel what happens as they come down now this time again separate from the beginning do not let yourself fall down take your wings up keep your nice self nice and tall press through space and down instead of just letting gravity put your arms down push out away from center using head and tail nicely in opposition to each other arms reaching out I'm going to go ahead and take legs easy apart, maybe just a little bit wider than shoulder width. But now thinking of that, remembering what that X felt like up on the floor, right? That I can have all points reaching through space. I'm going to just easy flex. I'm going to go a little bit wider just so that my hands don't get chopped off in the camera, right? Uh-huh. All uh, circling again, waking up the extremities for the foot bar, for the loops, for the pedal on the chair. And those are some of my favorite go-to warm-up pre-Pilates, get yourself ready to go exercises. Um, in self-practice, really do not limit yourself to the idea of choreography. Let movement happen. Because you are, if you're going to do a Pilates workout, if you're going to get on the reformer after this, uh, some days <laughs> the pre-Pilates might be enough. If you're going to get on the reformer, if you're going to get on the tower, if you're going to get on the chair, if you're going to put a spring on it, okay, you'll be much more informed about what your body wants to do that day. And if you use it in your teaching, you get a few minutes or maybe a whole session that you're really assessing 
and meeting your client where they are and giving them a chance to have their system come online with the work because they're coming in out of this crazy world and they walk into the oasis of the studio. It can take a second for a lot of people to switch gears, to put on the other hat and you need to give them that. You could also use it as like a cool down, right? When you know they're like, okay, they have done so much, but we have like five minutes left and let's just settle you so you're not walking out of here on this crazy hum, right? Um, a lot of programs don't teach pre-Pilates or that the body can be prepared and warmed up for 100. There's a lot of programs that really just teach the 100 is the warm up. Well, I'll agree with that again if you have been conditioned by the practice of Pilates. Then, then by all means, walk in, drop down into that 100 and get to work. But again, most of us need a hot second to just ooze and get with it.